Hi everyone, in this part I'll continue working on the body of Quadra from Cyberpunk 2077. I'll prepare the surface and try to make the first matrix. In the previous part I've leveled the model and removed all the foam irregularities, and I've also managed to paint it, that will help me in future to remove all small cavities and waves due to the difference of underlayer colors in putty. The surfaces were leveled quite rough and for a finer rework I used the car polyester putty which didn't treat the foam well in fact and dissolved it while the process of applying. Even though the foam is painted the putty will dissolve it. For the matrices I'll use a polyester resin which is also aggressive to the foam. In order to avoid breaking of the foam I'll cover the model with an epoxy resin and put it for a sample on some invisible area. In some places it has absorbed meaning the porosity of the previous putty and the resin needed to be applied in two layers. I'll start working from the front part, specifically from the hood. As I said the air intakes or headlamps on the hood should be removed. I failed to make them identical and they'd be manufactured separately. I closed the roughness with putty. I painted white spots with the same paint as the body. I took an ordinary epoxy resin adhesive. It took me 2 kilograms of it to treat the front part in two layers. At 16 degrees the epoxy resin is kinda thick, and it should be heated slightly with a dryer or put in a can with hot water for a few minutes and the composition will become as liquid as water. I mixed two components and began to paint the whole front part, hood, sides and bumper. The epoxy resin works like varnish and makes colors darker. The epoxy resin dried in about a day as it's written in the instruction. After application there appeared some humps on the surfaces and pores which were not difficult to remove with paper and bar. In order emery paper couldn't be plugged or heat the epoxy resin I used some water. After that we can move on to the surface fine leveling to make the draft matrices. I took ordinary car mid-grain polyester putty. I mixed it with the hardener and began to putty the model. I've never puttied surfaces of such size before and the standard ventilation system became not enough for me. In order not to become poisoned by that harmful evaporation, I decided to install an exhauster fan as soon as possible as it still would be needed during matrices making. For this purpose I took this kind of fan, it copes with an air exchange very well. I'll set in the center of the wall where the window used to be. Fortunately I laid it with a foam block that could be well sawed. I've already had one similar fan in the workshop and even cleaned its area with it. The compressor lifted dust from the surface and the fan blown it out in a minute. After fan installation I finished putting the surface and sanded it with water. Further goes probably the most difficult part of the model. A front bumper which has enough troubles. Only warp stripes can cause many problems. It also depends on its low location as it won't be possible to just remove and put it on the table. I started with a coarse rework with an engraver, then I prepared the surface with emery paper. I wasted about 700 grams of putty for the whole front. This significantly saved my money rather than if I immediately used polyester putty without using the prepared putty for walls. After finishing the bumper with PVC plastic I leveled all the sheer surfaces of the front part. 
All joints will be lubricated with a sculpture plasticine, the polyester resin doesn't erode it, and it helps to easily refine the surface of the model. I also leveled the bumper axles with foamed PVC plastic. This is what the model looks like after a complete rough rework of the surface. I'll make the underwing flaps from another material, so I'll leave a couple of centimeters for binding, and the rest will be separated by plastic board. I'll also delimit the bumper since there is no point in making a matrix from the lower flat bumper part. I also want to cover the surface with acrylic varnish before the matrix is done. It should fill the scratches from the sandpaper and make the surface smooth. The first matrix I decided to remove from the hood. In order not to climb on other parts one will make boards of plastic. Flanging cannot be glued on straight as it can damage the surface. It's better to do it through the masking tape. After complete isolation of the needed surface the gap between the plastic and the model will be removed with plasticin. I'll use an ordinary pan rod for this. Now we need to apply a mold release agent on the surface in order the resin couldn't adhere to the model. That's how the masking tape glues on the untreated surface. I have some separation wax as a paste and a liquid wax in an aerosol can. There is also a special spirit that gives 100% removal, but I'll use it when it comes to me. And now I use the paste, it needs to be applied to the surface and left for 20 minutes to dry. Then it must be polished with a soft tissue. This procedure needs to be repeated several times to make three or four layers of wax on the surface for a further easier matrix removal. That's how the masking tape was removed from the treated surface, and that's how it came off from wax which was sprayed from can. The tape didn't stick at all. I'll apply it to complex surfaces upon the poly roll. The surface is prepared, now we can start manufacturing the matrix. For this purpose I took a matrix gel coat, a special composition which is applied first. After baking it becomes solid and firm and more resistant to mechanical damage than ordinary gel coat or polyester resin. It also has thick consistency that guarantees thick dense layer on the surface. We should add a special hardener 1 or 2% of weight in the gel coat and mix them well. I was stirring it around 5 minutes because of its density. It is applied with ordinary brush as an epoxy resin before. It was drying for about 5 hours. During this time I prepared a glass mat with a density of 300 G per square meter. It was needed for matrix reinforcement. I cut it into many pieces in order not to be distracted during the work. After gel coat became solid we started to apply the polyester resin together with the glass mat on it. I needed the polyester resin in the same proportions, added 2% of the hardener. I got some strange lumps in the resin, but I think it wouldn't affect the product quality. First I put the resin on the gel coat, then covered it with glass mat and began to soak it with the brush and the resin. In this matrix I didn't use a stitcher wheel, maybe I'll try it next time. When the glass mat is completely soaked by polyester resin and has no air bubbles under it becomes transparent. 
This means that we can move on to the next piece of glass mat. In the first few layers I tried to soak the mat to the max and eject all air bubbles. If there is an air bubble under gel coat the surface will weaken, gel coat will crack, and we'll have to finalize the matrix with putty. As the hood of this car is giant the matrix should be reinforced by the metal framework so it can't be tilted in the future. For this purpose I took old square pipes and bent a kind of frame under the bend of the matrix. I welded right in place, tried not to heat the unfinished matrix too much. After that the framework should be glued to the matrix with the same polyester resin and glass mat. I also put several layers of mat on the matrix. In total we got about 6. This matrix took 14 kilograms of polyester resin and about 5 kilograms of glass mat. Now I know exactly how much material I have to order for the whole car. We boldly can order a barrel of resin and another one for manufacture of body parts and several rolls of glass mat of course. There are some air bubbles on the upper layers but they are not so dangerous as under gel coat. After drying I tried to remove the flanging and did it without much effort. I hope it'll also be easy to remove matrix from the model, but it'll be possible to remove it only after the connection of the rest of the matrices with it. And that's all for today. Thanks everyone for your attention. If you enjoyed the video put your thumbs up, share it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next part.